AMD has finally announced Zen 3, the Ryzen 5000 CPUs, and they look absolutely incredible for gaming. A lot of people were concerned about CPU bottlenecks for the new RTX 3000 series or AMD's own upcoming GPUs, and it looks like these new Ryzen processors are absolute monsters and they're going to be the new king for gaming performance. Let's discuss what we heard today and let's get right into it. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment below, and smash that like button. Let's get right into it. This is going to be just a quick reaction video. AMD just announced their Zen 3 on 7 nanometer, just like the previous Ryzen, but this is going to be the Ryzen 5000. So we have the Ryzen 5600X at 6 core, 12 thread. The 5800X is going to be 8 core. 5900X is 12 core, 24 thread, and the Monster 5950X at 16 core, 32 threads. Now, if these core counts and numbers sound vaguely familiar, that's because they're exactly what they were with the Ryzen 3000, except that now there's a five in front of it, but there's something else that makes a huge difference. For the first time, Ryzen is really gearing up to beat Intel in terms of being the best gaming CPU. Historically, every time Ryzen came out, they would have these great multi-core CPUs for a great price, but then Intel would come with something like an 8700K, still the king for gaming, they would say, 9900K, still the king for gaming, 10900K, still the king for gaming, but possibly not anymore. With the 5950X, this is an absolutely revolutionary CPU for AMD, because for the first time, you're not only getting absolutely bonkers performance in terms of the multi-threaded count, 16 core, 32 thread, you're also getting close to five gigahertz, much better IPC, much lower latency, all things that are very, very important for gaming. And for the first time with benchmarks, they really seem to be handing it to Intel. Now let's quickly talk about each of these new CPUs and how it pertains to what you may want to build in coming up now within the next few months. Of course, we must remember that GPUs are kind of perpetually out of stock, especially the RTX 3080. But AMD also made a quick note about, you know, the GPUs coming October 28th. But for now, pretty much all that we know for these CPUs, they're gonna be launching November 5th. Um, generally, they're gonna be around $50 more MSRP than the previous generation um, 3000 series. So basically, if we start with the 5600X, so basically, so basically starting with the 5600X, this is going to be sort of the predecessor to the 3600X, which was an exceedingly popular CPU because it basically got you to around 8700K level performance, not only for content creation, but also pretty close for gaming as well. Now the gaming performance is even better. It boosts all the way up to 4.7 gigahertz, and it's going to have all of the great advancements that Zen 3 will bring with the platform, like lower latency and everything that we mentioned, better IP. PC. This is going to be a CPU that's going to sell a considerable amount. Coming in at around $299, probably going to compete with something like the 10600K. But with all these new advancements with Zen 3, such as being more efficient than their counterparts on Intel, this CPU, I think, is going to be definitely one of the most popular ones. And of course, remember, this has the X in front of it. I'm sure they're going to release the regular 5600, which might just be clocked a little bit lower. But if it's anything like the previous generation, there wasn't that big of a difference between the 3600 and 3600X. Basically, you could save a little money by getting the one without the X. And I think it'll probably ring true for this CPU. So definitely pretty exciting that what is basically the entry-level CPU for now for Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 seems to perform pretty crazy high. It's a six core, 12 thread processor. For the first time, like these clock speeds are getting really high, great IPC. So it's definitely gonna be one of the best CPU choices when you're building your gaming rig and you don't wanna spend, you know, five or $600. So I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on the performance on this one as benchmarks come out, cause it seems pretty exciting. And next comes the Ryzen 5800X. Now this is gonna be eight core, 16 threads. It's gonna come in priced at about $449, which is a little bit more than the Intel counterpart that comes in the 10700K, around $409. But this is eight core, 16 threads. It's gonna be able to go for the first time now, all the way up to 4.7 gigahertz, you know, first time for AMD. Um, and with all the improvements that we spoke about as well with the 5600X, it looks to be very, very promising. And it's obvious that 
AMD definitely feels like they can up their price because of their position in the market now. Um, that's sort of what Intel did for years. They sort of did iterative updates to their CPUs while sort of upping the price and not having too much revolutionary performance. Now, I won't go as far as saying that the Ryzen 5000 are revolutionary because they're really not. It's the same multi-threaded performance, but I will say that they look like great advancements for gaming performance finally getting over Intel. Intel was king for gaming for so long. Of course, this is only until Intel's 11th generation drops. Who knows, they may respond to it. But for now, continuing with this 5800X, eight core, 16 threads, gaming performance seems like it's gonna at least be able to beat whatever Intel has for now, which is definitely pretty awesome and a step in the right direction for AMD. Then of course, we get to the 5900X, the monster 12 core, 24 thread CPU. Now, this one is gonna come in at $540 $49, which is pretty close to what the 10900K came in, and it's going to be coming in at around the 4.8 gigahertz, which is definitely pretty impressive. According to AMD, this is going to be the world's best gaming processor. I guess it beat the 10900K on most gaming benchmarks and things of that nature. The 3900X was what I consider to be basically a revolutionary type CPU, just because for the price, we've never seen such good multi threaded performance. For gaming, it was pretty good as well. So, this just basically makes that even better because now gaming performance is up to another level. Um, it's much more efficient. You have a lot of things that are going for this over Intel. And of course, we have to keep in mind, Intel still has time to respond. So this isn't really the end of the game yet. But the good news is that for the first time, Ryzen is at least really putting a nice lead on Intel when it comes from gaming. Usually in the past, I think the Ryzen chips would be happy to get at least close to Intel and they could win on sort of price to performance and having more cores. But now I think they really want to have more cores. Um, price to performance, I'm not sure. It seems like they're upping that MSRP a little bit. They're taking advantage of their market position. I don't blame them. I just hope they continue to innovate if Intel kind of drops out a little bit so we don't get that same story again um, with a lot of stagnation sort of in the market. But this is definitely a step in the right direction that AMD has beaten Intel in terms of this. So even if Intel comes with another CPU that actually beats these AMD CPUs for gaming, at least then we're going up and up and that's better for the consumer. And now finally, we have the 5950X 16 core 32 thread CPU. Um, I personally use a 3950X and I know how good that CPU is. So this one being able to go all the way up to 4.9 gigahertz, as well as all of the improvements we're getting with Zen 3, I think this is just going to be basically the CPU to beat overall the best CPU if you're doing content creation and gaming at the same time. So I really don't think Intel may have a very good answer for this because basically the only thing that they have that's close is the 18 core 10980XC, but that's still priced a little bit higher and the 3950X even in benchmarks comes pretty close already. So I'm sure when we see numbers for this 5950X, especially going up to 4.9 gigahertz and with the lower power consumption and all the great advancements that Zen 3 has. I think this, even though it's $799 and the MSRP has gone up 50 bucks, I still think it's sort of gonna be the ultimate mainstream CPU, aside from something like a Threadripper or something that's much higher end. So I'm very excited to see how the numbers actually come out from independent reviews on this. So to sum up, AMD's promising around average, maybe a 19% growth over the 3000 series Ryzen CPUs. Certainly pretty impressive. That's definitely a number that we're pretty happy with anytime we get near 20%. Now, it's also interesting to note that AMD is absolutely focusing on the gaming and enthusiast market. They know how important it is to build that trust with the brand, with AMD, um, especially with their GPUs. If people are happy on the CPU side, I've heard so many comments that they're waiting for these AMD GPUs so that AMD can have the same competition with Nvidia as they do with Intel. So so it's definitely making their brand as a whole much better. So even though these are only CPUs being targeted at gamers and enthusiasts, giving really high performing products with nice advancements, uh, launching these high performing products with gaming in mind. And when it comes time for them to buy a GPU, traditionally Nvidia of course is the biggest player in the market, but their heart might be a little softer and they may look at an AMD GPU and take that into consideration along with their CPU. Maybe they want an all AMD system or they can't find an NVIDIA GPU um, in stock. Or perhaps what we really want is that these new NVIDIA GPUs actually perform really well as well as their CPUs are performing in comparison with Intel. So this was just a brief reaction to the announcement that we heard today. Very excited for these new CPUs. They definitely promise a lot less CPU bottlenecking than we had before. That was definitely a big question. People 
were asking about different CPU bottlenecks and things of that nature. So these will certainly improve on that with the RTX 3000 series. So we have to see when these launch on November 5th, how good the performance actually is from real independent reviews. And I definitely plan to get my hands on them and I'll be doing a lot of content on this coming up for you guys as well. So remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next video.